What's up guys, I'm back here and today I'm with the 2024 M1000 XR. Now this is BMW's Elite Performance line and they've been doing this since 2021. Now they've been putting M stuff on bikes, but it's almost like an M, almost like a 340i that has an M package on it. This is the official M. So the official M gets a lot of little things and they've been doing this since 2021 and it started with the S1000RR that they turned into the M1000RR. Then we went and saw the M1000 Single R. Then we have the M1000 XR here. Now the M1000 XR actually shares the same engine as the S1000 RR, the 2023 and above, not the 20 through 22. Those have a little bit of different tweaks in them. I know it's a little bit hard to keep up here, but I'll try and get you guys uh, sorted with all the info. Now this bike makes over 200 horsepower as opposed to the 170 the standard S model comes with. That's the biggest difference between this and the S1000 XR. They both still have the same frame, both still have the same look to them. This just has a lot more carbon goodies and bits to it. Now this is the competition model, a little under 30,000 bucks, 29.9 I think you can get this, well, you can pick one of these models up for. And I believe it's under 25 if you want the stripped down uh, M1000 XR that is white. And it doesn't come with all the carbon bits and stuff like that but it still has all the power and speaking of the power it has a good deal of power but massive restrictions just like the s1000rr and the m1000 single r let me give you an example here i'm going to give everything in second gear now it takes off just like the s1000rr at 8000 rpm same exact thing and we have these restrictions in second third fourth and now fifth gear fifth gear is what they started to do in 2023 and they've been carrying that over it's like their new favorite thing to do is put a restriction in fifth gear as well so we're heavily restricted on this bike but it has a lot of potential guys because we know that from the s1000 double r but only just with the engine there are little m bits that says m here it says m xr here there's a lot of like m stuff you see on the bike the m carbon the m livery which is you know the uh asymmetrical red on one side blue on the other side i like the way they do this stuff now and i had a 2021 m1000 double r and we got the uh 2023 m1000 rr to kind of replace it and i do kind of like the body better and they advanced the technology as well on that bike now this owner here is off to do some a few race bits to it we've got a aftermarket shifter which i'm not a fan of any of people that love aftermarket shifters that's great awesome it's just a low speed stuff sometimes it doesn't activate and i mean rarely i've rarely gotten this thing to mess up i've ridden it for about 50 miles now but it just is it's too clunky it's not smooth like the bmw oem shifters are the best shifters in the market and i can understand if someone's coming in from like a, a kawasaki or a yamaha and they have that feel where it doesn't feel good a quick shifter does not feel good but when you mess with a, a bmw quick shifter they are peak man they're just the best quick shifters because they're so smooth at low speed and at top speed they snap into gear but what else is new with the m1000 xr well, we got these moto gp style wings here that's something different from the s1000 xr and they produce over 40 pounds of downforce at a claimed 171 miles per hour which is the claim top speed of this bike which is pretty impressive given the fact that this bike almost weighs 500 pounds without a rider that's a wet weight curb weight whereas the s1000 xr is a little over 500 pounds they shaved a few pounds of the engineering carbon a few of the, the bits they do with the m that just make it uniquely an m the speedo also has changed we got this thing going up to 15k well it says 14 there but it's all the way up to 15k so we got a higher rpm limiter of course the new engine that has a shift cam the uh standard s1000 xr does not have the shift cam so this gets really that torque that awesome torque which i'm not feeling because again there's no power in this thing uh with all those restrictions i can put it in the first gear and slam it and yeah it'll go to the sky but the second third fourth fifth like i said heavily restricted and not fun especially for an m labeled bike we shouldn't have these kinds of restrictions or worries right now of course we got the same modes we got before i've kind of put my stuff on the race pro here which is all the nannies off and i mean all of them um, but we've also got let's go here so let's go to road we've got that lazy feel to it it also has rain but it only accommodates four modes at once so if i want race pro i have to delete a mode 
or disable a mode, which is rain. So uh, the road is going to be my lowest mode at the moment. And you can hear on those downshifts right there, no popping, no nothing. That's another thing people don't really consider when they're modifying their bike. They want these pops and bangs, for example, but they'll put it in road mode because they don't know the bike, right? I'm not hearing any pops and bangs, nothing. Not an exciting bike, right? So let me go ahead and put this thing into Race Pro and show you guys the difference. Now Race Pro is have different settings and this is one of them. Let's get in the mode there, there you go. And let's hear the detail on this now. You heard it was nothing before, now listen to this. It's popping now. That's a thing BMW adds to these bikes that people don't really know when you go into a race pro mode, it enables certain things. Just a little footnote for you guys. As far as the low speed feel of this bike and, and the ride height, it is 33 inch tall seat. I mean, that's from, not, not the actual seat itself, but the ride height basically up to the bottom of the seat is 33 inches, which is a pretty tall bike. I know we were messing with that 1300, the GS, and that bike actually has an automatic ride height where it lowers and raises an inch and a half. Really cool stuff, to be honest with you. Now I'm six foot three, and I can feel the ground just fine with this bike. I can one foot it, I can two foot it, two flat foot it, just fine. But I can see a rider that is maybe 5'8 or something like that would have some issues touching the ground and might have to get a different seat. Even though this seat is extremely comfortable. I've got my heated grips on because it's a little bit chilly today. Yeah, this is an awesome bike just for low speed stuff, even though it's a branded race bike. And we have this windscreen here, which on the freeway didn't really do much for me. I put it up and down and I noticed maybe a little bit of air come off of me, but I think it's really just for looks to be honest with you, or when you're actually tucked, that's about it. So let me give you guys a brief overview of what we're gonna be doing with this bike on testing. What we do is we take the bike, we ride it 100 miles stock and 100 miles flashed. The 100 miles stock is to kind of see what we don't like about the bike, what we do like about the bike and improve upon it, make it even better than it was before. So we're making notes there, doing everything. I'm gonna take this thing up to the top, more top end stuff and test that as well to see how it feels through turns and see how the throttle feels and tip in, more for those track focused people. But this is also for the cruising people. And then we're gonna do a 60 through 130. No one knows how to drive here apparently. We're gonna do a 60 through 130 and see what this does stock. We take her to the dyno and we're gonna test it pre-flash and post-flash and just tell you guys how we got to that number and what we did to get there. And then we're gonna go over the post-flash review and tell you guys exactly how the bike's changed. Do that 60 through 130 again, do that top speed stuff again, and kind of go over the features on why we did what we did and how it makes the bike feel and how it improves the performance of the motorcycle. So uh, I'm gonna make my way over to the top end stuff and I'll see you guys when I get there. All right, we found some good top end stuff here. Let's go see what this M1000XR can actually do when it's really kind of pushed. So far, Tiffin's really nice. But the bike feels great, nice and even, but the power wads on in second gear as soon as you hit 8, 9,000 RPM. It's a little bit annoying. The power's nice. You can definitely feel that 30 horsepower over the standard XR, but it kind of comes in as a surprise when you're in the middle of a turn and you're finishing a turn. Again, tip in here, first gear. Very good. Tip in again here, let's give her a good feel. Yeah. Nice and smooth still. No problems, no jerkiness. First gear feels great. You get in a second gear, it feels like it's a loss of power. No power, no power, power. Power, power. It's kind of weird. You gotta account for it. It's not something I want to think about while I'm racing. Oh man, it has power. It has plenty of power. Power for days. Here we go, cresting. Oh, tire up over that. Nice. This is definitely an exciting bike. I'd love to throw this thing over some turns over the track. Very good feel. 
And we got that 47 tooth rear sprocket on here. I think it's really wonderfully geared for something like this. I think the M1000 single R has the same kind of gearing. It doesn't feel this good. No power power. That was wide open right there. This is kind of sad. I don't like that at all. Power, power wads on the, the tires that wants to come up out of the, off the ground. No power, power, power. The tire comes right up. Man, kind of an exciting bike. Even for a little shy of 500 pounds, the tire comes right up, first gear. No problem. The second gear. I, I, can't, I can't do anything in second gear to get that tire off the ground. So now we got a good feel for how this thing feels on the top end with the stock tuning. Let's see what she does, 60 through 130. All right, 60 through 130, stock tuning, 2024 M1000XR. Let's go. Almost forgot. Race mode. All right, now let's go. Come on, baby, let's go. was a 5.6, 60 through 130, 5.6 seconds. Not bad, and considering the standard XR, which I forgot what we did it in, but it was definitely slower than that in the standard XR. If you guys wanna see the full review of the standard XR, by the way, right there in the top right, go ahead and check it out if you want to, compare it against this bike. But 5.6, pretty respectable, but I can definitely feel that we like to do these 60 through 130s in second gear, not first gear, but second gear, so we can really take a look at the mid-range and the top end for that 60 through 130, not just top end stuff. So we can give you kind of an all-around sweep of what the bike feels like at all RPMs. Now you can definitely feel as a giant hole in the RPM in the mid-range, massive. But then also the top end, it kind of doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It's kind of stutters a little bit. There's definitely a gap in power up top as well. And we'll see that in the dyno, pre and post flash, of course. I also wanted to point something else out. I've been riding this bike for quite a while now on stock form, and I don't like the way, I didn't like the way the handlebars are feeling. It was doing this a lot on the freeway. You know, it was just kind of, it didn't feel, if I put a lot of weight in the front of it, it felt fine. But just a normal riding position, 80, 90 miles an hour, it started really kind of just, the bar started swaying around. It didn't feel right. So what I did is uh, there's an adjustable steering damper under the front fairing here. And I just turned that all the way up. And I did that in the M1000 single R and it didn't do much, it still needed more. But this bike max adjustment, I think feels good. No problems there. I think it's perfect the way it is. Just max it out, which is a clockwise turn. And you can feel um, if you're idling or stopped. Yeah, <laughs> if you're stopped. Um, you just shake the handlebars back and forth while you're stopping. You can feel there's more resistance on it. The steering damper is doing its work. So that's the one thing I did change from stock and I just kind of messed with the stock settings on it and just did it myself. As far as the combi settings, uh, a lot of people ask me about that. We have a video for the Race Pro settings up there at the top right. In my Race Pro settings, I turn all the nannies off and I turn the engine braking all the way up so I can get a good feel for this bike. And even when I do the 60 through 130, you see the trash control light. I turn the trash control off completely. I just turn it completely off and make sure all the nannies are completely gone because even with the way I have it, there's still trash control. There's still a couple other things. So I turn it all completely off. You get a true number of things, but set up your bike how you want it. But just so you guys know, this isn't like the old bikes. You really need to go into that combi and adjust your settings properly, especially if you're a guy that races and really pushes on the bike. You want to make sure all those things are right because when you get to a certain lean angle, the track control, the trash control is going to be doing too much or the wheelie control, if it's too high, that's going to start cutting you out. There's a whole bunch of stuff, little tricks to make these bikes super fast. So let's kind of go over this stuff here now. The cold starts on the bike, warm starts even, are horrendous. They start really high, two, 3,000 RPM and then settle down to 30 seconds. If you're in a, you know, HOA or you have some bright baby neighbors, they may not like that. So. That's something that definitely needs to be fixed as well. We got these gaps in the power, these holes. The uh, the tip in on the bike itself feels pretty good, honestly. Uh, coming on off throttle, transition and stuff, really good. The heat uh, from the engine, 
I'm on a 65 degree day here, so it's not too bad right now. It kind of feels nice having a little bit of heat there, but we'll adjust the cooling fans on this as well. And there's a lot to de-restricting these bikes, and I'll go over that after the dyno here, which is where we're taking this bike next. Overall, I think this bike feels great. I think it's a big, big step up from the, the standard S1000XR, but the power is not M performance in my opinion. This is not an M. If you were to tell me I had to buy the bike like this and this is how it was gonna be delivered and this is how I had to keep it, I would not buy this bike. And I've said that about every single performance bike from BMW. If you can't tune them, they're not worth buying in my opinion. So let's make our way over to the dyno and see what kind of power we can make with the M1000XR. What's up guys, I'm here at a new spot in LA, Motorsport Exotica. And what they do is they specialize in racing bikes in the Los Angeles area, of course. Got a Ducati, got some Gixxers, Aprilias, a lot of BMWs in here too. They're all working here. They're also a dealer for BT. So we've got the M1000XR on the dyno right now. We're gonna do some runs with her, see what she does. She's all set up. They even got this nice screen protector. I can get a focus on it. It says Moto, Motosport Exotic on it. All right, we're all wrapped up with the M1000 XR dyno tuning. Went pretty smoothly. It's just like an M1000 single R, and surprisingly enough, the restrictions from this bike are the same in the US as they are in Europe. That's a big change we've seen so far. Maybe a couple more horsepower more in Europe, but this thing is severely restricted. Let me show you what second gear looks like, which on the dyno, check this out, massively labored. So as you can hear, there's like no power and then the power just comes on, like just, just lays on the bike, which in my opinion, at a track that's a little bit dangerous, the power just pours on. And we're talking almost a 60 wheel horsepower difference between our run that's more linear, of course, and then of course the, uh, the stock baseline run, which is red and our, of course, tuned run is blue. We're making power over everywhere. That's almost 60 wheel right there just for second gear. Now let's go ahead and check out fifth gear. So here's a fifth gear comparison, stock versus flashed. And you can see, this is pretty crazy here. We got 20 wheel horsepower, if you can see that. 190 to 170. That's 20 wheel horsepower right there. And of course, the new for 23, and now we're carrying it to 24 here, is this mid-range restriction we never had in fifth gear, but now second, third, fourth, and fifth are restricted. And you can see we're gaining about eight wheel horsepower right there with a little bit of torque, six wheel torque. So that's a big change, the linear, power line right here just from our tuning versus the stock graph of course again stock graph is red our tuning is blue and you can see just the massive difference in how linear our stock stuff is, or how our tune stuff is versus that stock stuff makes the bike a lot more predictable a lot easier to ride let's put it that way check out that stock versus flashed afr right there in the mid-range we're seeing it dip a little bit we're seeing about 16.69 spike right there. Now, of course, I'm sampling from the exhaust, so it's not exactly accurate, but that's still pretty lean. And you can see our tuning right there nice and flat across the board. Now, of course, the biggest benefit to our flashing here is gonna be de-restricting these gears. So second, third, fourth, and fifth gear have restrictions, not only in the mid-range, like you normally see there, like we saw with second gear, but in the top end too. So what are the numbers here? We've got 182 stock, 194 after tuning. That is 12 wheel horsepower just up top. Forget that mid-range stuff. 12 wheel horsepower. And check out the torque. We did made one wheel torque. That's pretty nominal, honestly. But if you look here, you can see there's four wheel torque right there. There's a lot of torque right here. Probably about five wheel torque right there. It's a lot more changes than just seeing these numbers right there. Now with the BMWs, the awesome part is we get full-time closed loop, meaning it's enabled by us. A lot of people think that comes from the factory. It doesn't come from the factory. It does part-time meaning partial throttle and low RPM stuff, 
but not full time. We enable it for full time. So now we have full time closed loop on this. It's constantly making adjustments as we're adding modifications to it or we're riding it in different at atmospheric conditions. It's changing for all of those conditions. The throttle's now a lot smoother, shifting's gonna be smoother, and I can't wait to get my butt on this thing to actually test ride it. And I'm gonna go over a lot of these features with you and a lot of stuff I didn't talk about just now. I definitely wanted to see those power numbers with you guys. Insane. So let's get on the road. What's up guys, we are back with the now unleashed 24 M1000 XR after the dyno. So much power now. I mean, check this out, second gear. Before we had that nasty flat spot. Now I can't even keep the tire on the ground anymore. This thing is nasty. Dear Lord, it's so fast. Yes, on the dyno, we made 20 wheel horsepower up top, peak RPM, but just peak number to peak number, over 10 wheel horsepower. In the mid range, almost 60 wheel horsepower in second gear. Now, of course, the restrictions in second are the worst. There are a lot, there are less worse in third than less worse in fourth and so on to fifth gear. But the worst one is gonna be second gear and that's the one people complain about the most is that nasty flat spot in second gear. And it is completely gone. You guys remember, I couldn't get the tire up in second gear at all. Jeez, just clicking through gears in the air. The bike has so much power now. So guess where we're going right now? We're going more of the top end stuff. <laughs> but let's kind of go over some features that we added to this motorcycle. The exhaust valve, wide open now. And I've always told people that have BMWs, this exhaust flows so well. What BMW does with the exhaust is amazing. And the S1000R, for example, you can put an aftermarket exhaust on. If you put the wrong one on, it makes less power than the stock pipe, if you can't even believe that. On the top end, the mid-range, it should make a little more because that's mainly what the downfall is with a stock system, is going to be with the mid-range, you lose all that power. But it's so efficient on these bikes. So I tell people, hey, if you're happy with the power from the stock system and not the sound, wait until you get a flash, the exhaust valve opens up, we're able to control it, and it sounds so much better. You may not even want an aftermarket system after you do that, especially if you have this Acro muffler on that, like this one does, it sounds great. And people think they can remedy the sound with just a slip-on. No, the slip-on is not gonna do anything. It's gonna make a little bit of different noise, but it's basically, basically gonna be the same as stock because you got the exhaust valve still closed and it's not making any noise. That's the whole purpose of that valve, basically. Oh, this bike feels like an M now. I mean, I'm excited to get it up for the top end stuff. Now we've got the engine fans coming on a little bit sooner now too, which keeps the engine a little bit cooler. Cooler engine means cooler oil. Cooler oil means more oil longevity, which means more engine longevity. It's the little things, guys. The little things here and there that really do work. The improvements to the throttle and tip in, we're gonna check here on the top end. Now, the, a lot of the limiters here, especially if people are using I hear this argument all the time about dyno people. Oh, take your bike to a dyno. It's gonna be the best you can possibly do for your bike. Well, that's not true at all, actually. With these newer bikes, now we're looking at is a wide band system that comes factory on these bikes. This bike has four exhaust sensors, two upstream, two downstream. Now the upstreams are wide bands. The downstreams are narrow bands. The narrow bands monitor the wide bands. The wide bands make adjustments on the fly or can be set to that. Now stock, they do that partially at partial throttle and low RPM, but we can set it with our tuning to be full-time closed loop, which means it's always making changes. It doesn't matter what elevation you're at, what temperature it is, um, the modifications, let's say you put a different system on here, it's gonna make those changes for you where you don't need any tuning after that. You don't need custom tuning to make adjustments for it. It's done. And a lot of tuners will sit there and go, well, no, you're, you're still not getting on a dyno. The dyno needs to be done. Well, it, it doesn't need to be done just because of what I, what I just said. It tunes itself now. Now we take our bikes to the dyno just to verify 100% because it's one thing doing everything on paper, making those calculations, but it's another thing actually putting in a practical application like what we've done here. And this is why we do the reviews because it's important not only just to make the changes in a table, 
but to actually feel them on the bike and see what they do for the end user. That's why we do these reviews, because we want to make sure everything we do to the bike improves the bike. So I'm on my way here to the top end stuff. We're going to test that against the stop one. I think this is going to be a lot more lively just based on a couple little hits I've done back there and how this bike feels and how it runs. It feels so smooth now, but just so much more responsive. All right. We're at the top end stuff with this second gear already. It feels so much better, oh my god. Now that the power is linear, I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry about the bike getting away from me and gobbing power on at a certain RPM. This just throw power on at 8,000 RPM. Now it's nice and linear. I can worry about other things like my riding position. Low speed tip in. It feels smoother. <laughs> It definitely feels smoother. Air fuel changes like that can make the bike feel a lot smoother and that is a testament right now. Wow. So it was smooth before, now it's definitely more smooth. More smooth, more predictable. More one to one. This bike is like an extension of my body at this point. It feels so good. Inspiring. Here we go. Oh yeah. Oh my god, this bike is impressive. So much more fun. Oh wow. I want one of these. <laughs> That's what I've always been telling you guys. You don't flash this bike. Oh yeah. Trail brake, the brakes on this bike are great. I didn't say anything about the brakes yet, but they are very good. 500 pound bike coming to a stop like nothing. You don't feel the weight of this thing throwing it around either. Wow. What an <laughs> What an awesome machine. Oh man, I gotta go do that a couple more times. <laughs> what an amazing bike, wow. Good job BMW, I mean seriously. How comfy this bike is and how I'm feeling right now on it. And just to be able to do that and then just go right back into this cruising position like nothing. It feels nice and plain. It's so civil, there's no drama. But then back what it just did, Oh man, this bike is the best of both worlds. Amazing, amazing bike. So now that we got that done, let's go ahead and check out this post flash 60 through 130. All right, M1000XR, let's get that 60 through 130. Let's put it in a race mode here. Yes, now we're ready to go. All right, 60 through 130, let's go. improvement on the 60 through 130 a five second 60 through 130 post flash versus that 5.6 second 60 through 130 pre flash and for 100 to 150 which is just top end stuff so we're just testing top end there a full second difference we've got post flash at a 5.8 and pre flash 6.8 so it's a full second off so that just confirms with the dyno saw which is 20 wheel horsepower up top equates to a full second from 100 150 miles per hour this bike is faster than it was with a stock flash pretty impressive stuff so we're seeing basically we saw on the dyno insane numbers right but we're actually seeing them on the gps being confirmed so that's exactly what we want we don't want people thinking we're just fluffing numbers in the dyno we're actually testing this stuff, we're out here making sure this is all exactly as we say it, 
So let's go for the overall review of this bike here. Post flash, it feels insane. In fact, I know this bike is gonna go to the track. It's gonna hurt some feelings of some super bikes. Some guy there with the ZX10, some guy with the Triple R CBR, some guy with the S1000RR. They're gonna watch this thing go right by them in the corners and in the straights and sit there and scratch their head and go, how, how did that just happen? This bike is that impressive. Now I'm sure the wings are doing something, you know, at 100 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour and stuff like that, but you know, they aren't putting that over 40 pounds of downforce on that you get at the 170 mile, uh, 170 mile per hour marker that they're claiming. But I'm sure it does some help because this, this front end just wants to come up in the air a lot of the time now. So we've got the bike completely de-restricted here. We've got better cooling fans, torque limiters gone, smoother on and off throttle transmission transitions, which I didn't think it was possible from stock. It felt great stock, but it does feel smoother. I mean, we're talking like when I'm in high RPM in first gear, I can notice a little bit of the difference there. And that's just exacting that air fuel ratio. And we saw on the stock air fuel on the dyno there that the stock one, it was so lean. It spiked up to like, I don't know, 16.0 in the mid-range or something like that and stay lean the entire time. So smoothing out all that stuff really gives you guys just a better throttle feel. We've got the full-time closed loop on here. The bike is constantly tuning itself. That's a BT Motor exclusive feature. we got the exhaust valve wide open for people that are running a completely stock system. This throttle's a lot more one-to-one -one now. Uh, before it had a, it felt like I had a little latency in it, but it, it was still very good, but now it just feels a lot better. And that may be in part due to the de-restriction as well. It just feels, it just feels like there's, it's a more of a, a close response, a better response to the throttle. But without interrupting any of the tip-in stuff, the tip-in still is amazing. And you could be as gentle as a feather on it and it won't throw you off the, off the back of the bike. Even the ignition tables on the bike, we change, but we change them safely. Meaning there's, a, there's not just one or two, there's a litany of ignition maps in this bike. And it goes from a low octane to a high octane type of type of scenario. Meaning, if the knock sensor C knock, they change the ignition mapping to a different map. So what happens when you put really good, really good fuel in it is it goes to the highest ignition mapping possible with the most timing. If it sees knock, it goes to the lowest. So that means if you put 87 octane in here, I'm not recommending it. But if you did, the bike would still be okay. It wouldn't knock its brains out. It wouldn't die. It would just feel sluggish because there's emergency mapping or a low ignition map in here that we set to make sure that if you make a boo-boo or if there's bad gas in the bike, the bike's not going to knock its brains out. That's some safety we put into the mapping. So we don't care about, I mean, we do care about overall power, but it's power, rideability, and reliability. Those things are all the most important on a motorcycle. Especially when you're making an investment like this, that's $30,000 on a motorcycle. You want to make sure that your mapping is safe. And we make sure of that. Now, granted, we moved the RPM limiter up uh, a few RPM, nothing crazy like that. Um, on some of our mapping. If you don't like that, the questionnaire we send you guys when you buy our stuff, it'll ask you, do you want us to, you know, give you a higher RPM limiter? If you don't like that, just say no. Just leave it at the stock RPM limiter. No one's gonna argue with you, it'll be fine. And I know I didn't say anything about this before, but these rear sets are so nice. They're nice and chunky. I love the way they look and feel. Like it's, it's perfect for this bike and I haven't seen it on any other BMW offering. <laughs> Just so you guys know, I found a sticker in the back here. If you, are <laughs> if you have a thousand pounds of people in here, so you and a, you and a passenger are 992 pounds or something like that, it says that's the maximum limit. That's that's the best you can do for this bike. You don't put anything else on this bike, which I mean, that's about a thousand pounds. I really hope there aren't two people equating to do a thousand pounds on this bike. <laughs> that's crazy. But also, it said. Um, I believe it's 110 pounds for the bags too. So if you put bags on here because it's an XR, right? You want to use it for cruising. Uh, you can only go 100, uh, that's 110 miles per hour. That's what it is, 110 miles per hour if you have bags of the size. So keep that in mind too. They recommend, I don't know if they're gonna fall off or something after that speed. I know with the K1600 bagger, for example, they have those limitations on there for bags, but I know people push them, those bikes really hard and past that recommended speed. And of course, everything still works here. The mode still operates exactly as it should. The cruise control still operates exactly as it should. I got cruise control right here. 
the modes still work exactly as they should. Remember I told you that popping on and off throttle stuff that BMW does, that's still retained with our tuning. Um, you still, I'm using the heated grips now. There's no functionality you lose doing the tuning. All the modes are still functional. Everything is still functional. There's hundreds of hours of R&D for BMW stuff that we've done, and we've utilized that to give you a perfect tune for the M1000XR, and I think we've accomplished that. This thing feels amazing. I'm really considering buying one of these just because it's so comfy. I just don't have room in my garage for one of these. And for those of you that want to track the bike, Audible Traction Control, we offer it for this bike too. So link in the top right there if you want to see what Audible Traction Control is, but it's basically taking out the traditional BMW uh, throttle valve suppression or the throttle valve, it closes that up for traction control. It does cylinder suppression instead, which means it starts cutting cylinders and you can hear it while you're riding the bike. So you'll be able to hear when your tire is going, how much track control you're actually using, and you can adjust it here on the fly using your DTC menu. So that's the fine adjustment there. Of course, I'd go into the combi and make the race pro settings how you want them for the main stuff and then adjust it finite through the DTC, but that's also available for this bike, Audible Trash Control. So I think it's gonna wrap up this review and uh, I'll do a little bit of testing in traffic. And I've also been testing the miles per gallon. No noticeable decrease in miles per gallon in case that was a worry for people that buy an M. I don't, can't imagine it would be, but just to let you guys know, no noticeable decrease in miles per gallon that I've been testing and I've ran a few tanks of gas through this thing already. So I think it's gonna do it guys. I'm just gonna sit in traffic till I get home and uh, see you guys in the next one.